Hey guys, it's T, and today I'm gonna teach you how to port Fortnite models. A lot has happened since the last porting tutorial that was made around 8 months ago. New model broke twice, a new file is required to port, and new Fortnite shaders have come out. Most information in the video should stay relevant for a really long time after I release the video, but knowing me, things will change up. If things change, check the pinned comment and description to see if there are any updates. One more thing before we get into this tutorial, if you want to show support to me and the other amazing people who helped one way or another for this video, our socials will be linked down below. Anyways, let's get started. You'll need 5 programs and files for porting Fortnite models. If you look in the description, you'll find the links for the things you need. You need to download UEViewer aka UModel, Blender, PSK to Blender add-on by Befs, FN Shader 1.5 Shader by Fry's Effects, and the new 002 file, also known as an oodle file. Your computer may flag this oodle as a virus, but it's a false positive as it's only a file that allows you model to read the game files. Also, the link may break when using the Chrome browser, so use other browsers like Microsoft Edge, Firefox, or even Internet Explorer if you're feeling daring. Make sure to make folders for Blender new model in your programs folder and make sure to remember where they are located because we will need them for later. When you have the PSK add-on into your computer, drag it to a safe location, unzip the add-on, and then open Blender. In the far upper left hand corner, directly to the right of the file option, there should be an edit option. Click edit, preferences, add-ons, then install in the top right hand corner of the pop-up. Go to where you saved the PSK add-on, then click on the master folder, then add-ons, and then select the 2.8 version. At the time of writing, the 2.8 version is compatible with every version that is after Blender 2.8. Check the box when the PSK importer shows up into the sender bar. Finally, make sure to drag the oodle file into the same folder where you installed UModel. So, let's port a model. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Grimoire skin since it has most of the textures and meshes you'll see on a typical Fortnite model. First of all, open up UModel and find your Fortnite files. If you haven't changed where you installed it, they should be under this directory. I'm not reading that out. Confirm your salt folder selection and then check override detection box. There, you'll be able to change the left box to Unreal Engine 4, and then set the right box to Unreal Engine 4.27. This version may change in the future as Fortnite's Unreal Engine version may be updated with future updates to the game. You can also check the sound box, but it isn't really necessary to. Now, hit OK and a box should pop up saying something along the lines of specify an AES key. While this next step can be done on your own, I would strongly recommend joining Shadow's 3D Art Discord to make this a lot easier. It may be a little bit chaotic at times, but overall it has a very helpful and active community. It also has some Discord bots that we'll need for this tutorial and will make this process go a lot smoother. Do not ask for free stuff. If you don't want to join, I'll provide some resources below so you can follow along. The first thing we'll need is an AES key. To find it, go to bot commands channel and type in exclamation point AES. A couple strings of numbers and letters should pop up, but use the first one with the static key label. This key will be used to decrypt Fortnite's files for you to look through. Copy the AES and paste it into the box from earlier, and then finally confirm it and you're now in the Fortnite files. First. We need the ID of the skin we're porting. If you're on the server, go to bot commands channel and then type in exclamation point CID and then the name of this skin. In this example, I'm porting the non hooded style of grimoire. Typing in the command brings up a couple of things. Ignore the words and numbers on the first row as they aren't really important for what we're doing. The second row, however, gives us the name of the body mesh, which in this case is called F Med Poison. Keep in mind, we're porting the non-hooded style, so we'll have to copy the first style's name. Thankfully, the body's textures are the same name as the mesh, so we don't have to worry about finding them. After you copy the body ID, go back to your model, check the flat view box, and then finally paste it into the filter bar. Handy tip, make sure to type in the mesh after the words you pasted in as it will 
filter out the texture results. To find the mesh, which should have no suffix after it, some examples are NMBP or skeleton. If you're having trouble finding it, you can hover over the options and see the full file name. Click on the mesh when you find it, go to tools, and then hit export. That's one out of three parts of the model exported. The second row of the head seems kinda complicated, but when you know what you're doing, it becomes pretty straightforward. To read it correctly, the left side of the colon shows the head mesh that we need, which in this case is F Med Battlesuit Head. The right side shows the textures or materials that the head mesh will use, which in this case is called Poison Head. So to find the head mesh, type F Med Battlesuit Head and then add mesh. Finally, click on the mesh like you did before and then export it. To find the head textures, paste in Poison Head. This should bring up a couple of results, but the one that should have all the materials you need is the materials file. When exporting, this will have the D, M, N, and S textures combined. You'll learn what they do when we get into the blender portion of the video. The final part that you need to get, the F Med Poison Face Act, shouldn't be too hard to get as you port it the same way as the body in the head mesh. Alright, let's move into the blender portion. Now. Let's open up Blender if you haven't already. Go to the file dropdown, import, and then click import PSK. Before looking for the model, look on the right side of the window that popped up. There should be an option box that has a couple of settings. While you can use unreoriented bones, we're going to be using reoriented bones for this tutorial. They're better for visualizing what we need to do. If you didn't change the export path, which you didn't if you followed the tutorial, Navigate to the U model folder and then find the body and head meshes. If this is your first model that you're porting, it should be pretty straightforward as there will be a, only a couple of folders that you will need to go through to find the body. Once you find it, you should hit the import button. The head mesh should be under F Med Battle Suit Mesh, and the face act should be under the parts subfolder in the body mesh. It's not always going to be this way for all skins, so it's, if it's not in parts folder in that body folder, then it's in either another body folder or in the accessories hats folder. If this is your first skin and have trouble figuring out which bone is which, make sure to go to the top right for each armature, go to the green dancing man in the bottom, also known as the object data properties, go down to the viewport display drop down, and then turn on names. There may also be some minor differences with how you merge bones, but I'll address them in the FAQ section at this timestamp. To prep our face act mesh to be joined with the head mesh, we will first need to hide our head and body armatures by going up to the top right and clicking the eye icons next to them. Then we'll select the face act armature, go into edit mode by pressing tab, and then delete the spine, neck, and head bones from the hair. Some heads may have hair on top of their head already and may need to be deleted, but we'll go over that later on. To prep the head armature to be merged with the other armatures, we'll need to hide the face act armature and unhide the head armature. Go to edit mode and then delete all of the bones below neck 01 by holding left click and dragging it over the body bones. For the body armature, you're going to want to do the same thing as before, but delete only the head and neck bones. Now, to join the armatures together, you want to look at the top right of your screen, unhide all the armatures by clicking the eye, then select the face act, head, and body armatures with control left click, and then press control J to join them. Do not join the meshes though. First of all, we want to make sure our bones control our mesh. To do that, click on the face mesh and then on the blue wrench, also known as the modifiers tab. If the text is red, that means the mesh is in synced. To sync it, you want to click the red object tab and then sync it to the armature's name, which normally has an AO at the end of it. Repeat this until all of the meshes are synced. One last thing we'll have to do before texturing, which is parenting unparented bones. That means that it has no bone controlling its position, which is pretty bad. To fix this, in edit mode, you'll have to figure out which bones are unparented, which in this case, are the top hair bones and the neck 01 bone. Anyways, in edit mode, select the neck 01 bone and then the spine 05 bone, press Control P, 
and then hit offset. We have successfully parented our neck bone to our spine bone. Finally, you're going to want to shift click every single hair bone that doesn't have a parent and then select the head bone and hit control P and then offset. To make sure that you're selecting the right bones during this process, click the bone icon in edit mode, go down to relations and then open the tab. If it doesn't have a parent, there should be nothing in the box. Anyways, with our mesh prepared, it's time to move on to texturing. Now it's texturing time. First off, let's quickly switch over to the shading tab. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the FN Shader 1.5 standard by FriesFX on Twitter. There is an advanced version, but it causes way more slowdowns and the standard shader will suit our purposes just fine. Starting off, make sure to hit use nodes or else you won't be able to follow these steps. To texture them, drag the blend file you downloaded into your blender window, then hit append, node group, and then fn standard shader. To add it to your shading window, go to add, group, and then fn standard shader. To add textures, you can navigate them using Blender's file browser or just open up the file explorer on your computer. We're going to use Blender's file browser for this tutorial. Navigate to where the characters folders are and it should be under textures. For the head, it should be under skins. Now, drag the D, M, N, and S textures into your shader editor. You can also drag the FX texture as we'll talk about it later on in the FAQ section in the video. Your image textures will be orange, but mine are just teal. Anyways, leave the D texture B, but turn the S and N texture to non-color. Plug all of the textures into their correct labels, which should be self-explanatory. For skins with E textures, it's no different. Just keep it on sRGB and plug it into the E slot. Now, repeat this process for the body and face act textures. Also, to use your M texture, you're going to have to go down to your shader and then turn up the subsurface scattering strength. You can turn it up to 0.01, but you can also go a little bit higher, but be careful as it may make the model look weird. In short, subsurface scattering is how light interacts with different objects. Think of when you put your finger in a bright light on your phone. The head has a rule of thumb for the other skins, especially the older ones and the default model ones. If their specific skin has no N and S textures, then they share it with another skin. Now that we've ported and textured it, what now? Go up and save it just like any other thing. Then go to File, External Data, then check Automatically Pack into Blend. This will make the model usable in any blend file as the textures are with the models. Leaving it unchecked causes your model to turn purple when adding it into a different scene. Now you're finished and you've ported a skin. Now here's some FAQs. Well, you've got to check and see if the mesh was with the armature. Go to the blue wrench and check if your text is red. If you've merged the meshes, you're gonna have to either re-add them to Blender or go back with Control Z. FX textures are usually unique to a character and usually specify which effect goes where. Could be anything from assigning where Lynx has her triangles appear to something more mundane like having gloss on a coat. You're really gonna have to play it by ear. Why should I port models instead of downloading them? Downloaded models are pretty screwed up and I'm speaking from past experiences. They often aren't parented right, textured right, synced right, or just simply use the wrong textures. First, you gotta select the head mesh, go into edit mode with tab, select everything with A, right click, and then separate, and then separate by material. Then you can safely delete the hair mesh, and then just leave the head mesh. You also may need to delete extra bones that came with the hair, but it shouldn't be too bad as it is apparent which ones are synced to the hair. Anyways guys, that's about it for this tutorial. Hopefully this video helps you and maybe even your friends port a Fortnite model. Maybe you can teach somebody things as well, I don't know. Once again, if you want to show support to me and all the other people who enabled this to happen, make sure to drop them a follow on Twitter or just on any of their socials to be honest. Yeah, I'll see you guys later.